up the series what on earth are we here for and I hope through this series you found some answers to that question as we've looked at a lot of different aspects of what God created you for he created you to be loved he created you to become he created you to serve others he's done so much in our lives and now he wants to continue that process it's an ongoing process and and so today we're going to wrap up the series with with I think probably one of the more practical sides of what we're going to talk, what we've talked about in this entire series, and that is now, what are we going to do with all of this? What are we going to do with what God's doing in us? What are we going to do with the love that He's shown us? Well, today on this Back to Church Sunday, I'm I'm hoping that we're all thinking that we are a part of God's mission, and that God has this great plan and great mission for you to carry out in your workplace, in your family, in your schools, and right here in our community. And so today I want you to really think about this because we're, we're going to be talking about maybe some different people in our lives that we know that might need, that, that obviously they do need the love of Jesus in their lives. And how are you going to reach out to them and show them that? But before I get into all that, I want to start it off by asking a question, and it's this, what are you packing for this journey that you called life? What have you been packing for this journey you call life? I, um, I, I, when I do a, our Connect classes, uh, that's a, we, we use kind of an illustration to talk about the mission of our church, which is to love God and to love others, and that it's kind of like you're packing a backpack. Um, a few years ago, and it's been more than a few years ago now, but my son Matthew and I, we decided to go on a camping trip, okay? So we went down to Hoosier National Forest, and we kind of uh, thought, you know what, we're going to do this camping trip the, 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 man, the manly way, right? Like, we're going to do it backcountry style. We're going to walk in with backpacks. We're going to take in everything with us. We're going to take our food. We're going to take our water. You know, we're going we're gonna to really show how manly we are. So, you know, we go down there, and, and we walk, and we walked a good while to get to this lake that was there. And then it occurred to us as we're walking along that maybe it wasn't such a good idea to pack, like, a couple, three gallons of water in your backpack because it was extremely heavy. I mean, we took a lot of stops getting out there. I mean, we were tired. And then we carried food out there that was, like, in cans, which added to the weight. So we're carrying these huge backpacks. And, and I got to be thinking, you know what? I am definitely a rookie at this whole thing I, because what I found out later is there's different foods that you can get that weighs a lot less than cans. And they have these water filtration things. We're going to be right on a lake we could have used so that we didn't have to carry all this water out there with us. And so it got me to be thinking, you know, each of us in our lives, we're all carrying stuff with us. We're all on a journey together. But the, the problem is, is that sometimes maybe we're not quite carrying the right things with us. Maybe we're carrying the cans and all these gallons of water. We're carrying all these things. When maybe God is asking us to pack a little more smartly, to, to maybe go out into the world and accomplish the mission that He's called us to in a better way. I think some of us, though, maybe today, it's not so much what you've packed in the backpack, but you haven't even put on the backpack at all. Maybe you haven't even joined into the mission, joined the mission that God has called all of us to. And, and, and that's what we're going to look at today. God has called all of us to be loved, to become, to belong, and to bless others. But He's also called us to the fifth and final part of this mission, and that is to go out and to bring others into His family. You know, in Romans chapter 10, it says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, but how can they call on Him to save them unless they believe in Him? And how can they believe in Him if they've never even heard about Him? And how can they hear about Him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the Scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. See, Paul is sharing with us today is that your mission is to bring others into God's family. 
Your mission is to bring others into God's family. You know, if you dig a little bit deeper here at what Paul's saying, we find kind of the goal and the basis of our mission. If you look in verse 13, the goal is to help others come to a saving relationship with Jesus Christ so that they can be saved. The, the same experience that many of us in here today, those of, us who, those of you that are joining with us online, we've all experienced for ourselves. The, the work of Jesus Christ in our life and, and what He's done. And so what we are called to do is to, to go out and to share that with others. And, and then in verse 14, we see the basis of this call. The, the basis of it is, is that they have to know about Jesus. Somebody has to go and tell them. <laughs> you know, Jesus isn't found by osmosis. Jesus isn't found through some kind of psychic powers where we can send send this message to Jesus. No, we have to go and tell them. And in verse 14, it says they have to hear. They have to hear the message so that they can receive salvation. You know, we have the best news of all. We have the news of Jesus. The one, that, the, the one who has come and died for us, like Dave just shared with us during communion time. He has come to save us and restore us and to give us purpose and to give us mission. So that when we try to answer this question that this series has been about, what on earth am I here for? We have an answer for it. Jesus has given us that. We have the best news of all, and so we need to share it. You know, one of the reasons that, that we share the Word of God with others and we share the message of Jesus with others is because of the power that it contains within it. I think throughout the Bible of all the different stories that are out there, uh, that are in the Bible. There's a lot of them, isn't there? I mean, we could think of the stories of Moses and David. We even think, obviously, of the story of Jesus, but even Paul and John. We think of all of these men and women throughout the Scripture who have allowed God to work in their lives and to share the truth of what, whatever it was that God called them to do. Obviously, in the Old Testament before Jesus came, they were talking about just the nature of who God is Himself, the God of the Old Testament that we read about. And that same God then gave us Jesus. And then we learn more about who Jesus is and about who God is in Christ. And so we have these amazing stories. So you know what I thought would be kind of neat here for a second? I want you to tell somebody next to you. I'm going to give you like a minute, okay? I want you to tell somebody next to you what your favorite Bible story is and why. Can you do that? All right, I'll give you a second to think. What's your favorite Bible story, and why is it your favorite Bible story? Go ahead, and come on, we can talk, we can share. All right, what's your favorite Bible story, and why is it your favorite? Hmm. Hmm. All right, so did we share it? We share our story, what our favorite story is? All right, let me hear, anybody want to shout out a couple of them to me? Favorite stories. Yeah. What's that? David and Goliath. That's a great one. Yes, Hosea. Hosea, yes, that's a great story. Yes, that's a good one. Yeah, there's so many stories in the Bible that teach us so much. And the message of Jesus is the greatest of those stories. And we need to share that message. That's the mission for us. You know, there's a little boy that once, one time came home from church, and he had been in class at church, and they had told a Bible story, and they were talking about Moses. And his, his mom's like, okay, well, tell me the story about Moses. What was it about? And, and the little boy starts telling the story. He says, well, well God sent Moses behind enemy lines. Okay? He goes behind enemy lines, and then he gets to the Red Sea, and they build this pontoon boat, and they use walkie-talkies, and then he brings it, they bring in an airstrike to take down the Egyptians that Israel saved. And, and his mom's like, I don't, I don't remember the story being that way. Well, he says, well, I, if I told you the real way, you wouldn't believe it. It's so crazy. <laughs> You know, and, but see, what I, love, what I love about that, though, is, is that is how powerful the message of the Word is. Just so many powerful messages for us to share, and Jesus' message is the one we are all called to share. And so I want you to repeat after me. We're going to bring it here on the screen. Repeat after me. Uh, let's go ahead and move to the next slide. That I, 
let's say it together. I can be a part of God's story by living with mission. If we live with this mission that God has called us to, to share the gospel, we can be a part of God's story. Just like those characters that we read about throughout Scripture, the Moseses and the Davids and the Hoseas, we can be a part of God's story by living with mission. If you go back into Romans 10, 15 again, it says, and how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. See, for us to be missional, we have to be followers. We have to be, we have to be in it hook, line, and sinker for the mission of Jesus. We, we have to follow him and want to grow. You know, as we've talked about over these last few weeks, we have to be willing to accept the love that God has shown to us. We have to willing, be willing to want to belong to our family, to our church family, so that we are here for each other. We have to be willing to become what God has called us to. And we have to be willing to bless others by acts of service and love. See, if, if we are willing to connect with that mission, we can truly change our community and change the world. See, I, I'm talking to all of us here today individually, but, I, but I, I also am talking to all of us here as a group, as the church. See, we have to be a missional church. God has called us to be missional. We have to reach our community and serve. That's why we talk in our church a lot about things, uh, about serving others, about being involved in our ministries here. That's why one time a year, which is next week, we don't even meet together for worship on a Sunday morning, but we go out into the community and we serve. We do that as a reminder of how important it is for us to share the mission through the way that we love and through the things that we do. See, our, our mission here is to love God and to love others more and more. That's what we are called to do. Now, if you get back to the text here in Romans chapter 10, there's something that maybe, maybe you caught it, maybe you missed it, but it talks here about beautiful feet. You see that there? In verse 15, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, feet aren't always the most beautiful things, okay? Uh, I'm not going to try to go into the details on that, but, but I mean, feet aren't... But so so what, is, what is he saying here? And, and so when I looked at it, it here's what's really interesting. So, so nowadays, when we get the news, what do we do? We go on the television, internet, whatever, to find out what's going on. Well, in ancient times, the only way that you could find out about something going on somewhere else is for somebody to come and tell you. So there were actually people who had the job of running or traveling between places to bring good news. Now, usually they would use horses or animals to get them from place to place, but sometimes they would actually, if it was maybe a shorter distance, they would actually run. And when they would run, they would always be able to tell if the news was good or bad, okay, by the way that they ran, so if, if maybe there was a battle that was, that was some distance away and somebody comes running and they're excited and they're, they knew, wow, this is good news. We have some, but if they kind of come and they're kind of trudging along, they know, ooh, this is bad news. See, this is the image that Paul has in mind. He is thinking of each of us, you and me, as the very person that brings that good news. That brings that good news. That, that person will see your feet as, as lovely, as wonderful because of the news that you share with them. God has called us to be that messenger. In Luke chapter 4, you know, Jesus, Jesus had a mission statement of his own, and so because we follow Jesus, because he's our Lord, because he's our master, it has to be our mission too. And look what he says here in Luke 4, 18 to 19. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released and that the blind will see and that the oppressed will be set free and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. See, that, if you boil down Jesus' entire ministry, that's what it's all about in those two verses. This is his mission statement. Now, if I were to look at these two verses and maybe try to come down with the very specific mission that Jesus has, what would it be? He came to bring freedom. You see that there? He came to bring freedom. He, 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 he 
wanted us, and, and, he, and he came and he wants us too, to bring freedom into the lives of others. Freedom from their past, from their hang-ups, from the habits, the failures of their past, in order to bring freedom. In many ways, you could say that we are freedom fighters. All of us in here today are called to this mission to be freedom fighters. Now, Jesus' mission, we know, should be ours. So what are we supposed to do? Well, we have, this begs this question, how can we live out Jesus' mission? Again, go back to this statement. If you look at this statement, these two verses, in 18 and 19, in chapter 4, there are five groups of people here that Jesus is talking about. Now, I know some of you may have the outline that's, that's in your bulletin today, and we're going to use the outline a little bit there because I want you to think a little bit about maybe some people that might be in these positions. So there's five groups of people, okay? So the first group of people, if you look really closer here, he talks about releasing those who are financially imprisoned. He says, God has anointed me to bring good news to who? To the poor. So there are those who are financially imprisoned. Then we see here that he also came to bring freedom to those who are being physically imprisoned. See here it says, he has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released. And then he talks about those who are maybe medically imprisoned. That the blind will see. He talks about those who are emotionally imprisoned. That what? That the oppressed will be set free. He talks about those who are spiritually in prison and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Here's what I want to invite you to do. Whether you have the outline in front of you or not, I want you to think there's, there's five groups of people that he's talking about here. Can you think of maybe one person in your life today that is imprisoned in each of these areas? You don't have to write it down, but maybe it'd be a good idea to write it down because maybe you could take it with you as kind of a reminder of the mission. But who are some people in your life, maybe it's someone you work with that are struggling financially and they need some good news? Who, who are some people that are really struggling emotionally? Maybe, even, maybe it's even someone that's physically in prison. I want you to think today of, of these groups of people that Jesus is talking about because each of these people they need freedom our world is so imprisoned and that's why Jesus came to bring freedom see God is God is calling you and me if you're wondering what on earth am I here for you're here to live out his mission see when Jesus said this in Luke 4, 18 and 19. He didn't do what a lot, of, a lot of places or organizations do. He didn't write up this mission statement, slap it on a wall and, and point it at it and said, all right, well, let's try to do this, but then never did it. <laughs> Jesus laid out his mission statement and then he followed through with it. He put his very life on the line for it. You know, you can argue in many ways that this mission statement that Jesus shared was eventually what led to the cross. And you know what? For us, it, it might not be the easiest road to go. But it's the mission He's called you and I to. It's how we know why we're here. See, if you look in the whole context of Luke chapter 4, Jesus did exactly what He said He was going to come to do. It wasn't easy for Him. We know that, that Jesus was both God and human, so from the God side, yes, it was easy for him to carry out this mission, but there was still the humanity side of him that was trying to pull him away from that mission, just like you and I. It's so easy for us to get pulled away from this mission ourselves. I mean, think about it. Jesus had, if you, if you look here in, in Luke 4, and, and if you look at the chapters preceding, Jesus was, well, you could say he was distracted just before he had been in the desert being tempted. Talk about a distraction. <laughs> he was offered power and wealth and prestige by Satan himself. See, Satan was trying to distract him from this mission in Luke 4 that we read about. He was trying to get him to worry more about stuff and about power and about the way people look at him. And those are often the tools that Satan uses against us. His playbook hasn't changed a whole lot. 
So often we worry more about what other people think about us. Or that I always need more money. Or if I just had this job, or I had this power, I... And see, Jesus was tempted like that too, but yet he stuck, he, he stood by the mission. You know, every Sunday morning we come to church and we hear from the Word of God, and hopefully throughout the week you do that. You spend time on your own with God, reading through the Word and in prayer. But then what often happens is we get out of that moment, and then all this stuff comes creeping in. And then we get distracted. And we forget why we're here. And then, and then we kind of get down. I know this happens to me. I, I'm like, okay, what, what am I doing? And then I have to remind myself, I've got to get back to this mission. This is what he's called me to. He's called all of us to. So here's what I want you to do next with those five people. Hopefully you've wrote down maybe five people. Maybe you can only think of a couple right now. That's fine. You know what's really easy to do? It's really easy to write down these names and to think of these people and then do nothing. I mean, I'm, I'm sure right now you can think of some people in these situations. And, but if we follow Jesus, if, we, if He is our Master, if He is our Lord, we, we have to do what Jesus did, right? So... He laid out his mission. He thought of the people that needed help, and then what did he do? He went and did something about it. He went to the cross for you and me. He brought freedom into the lives of the people that he met in the, time, in the period that he was here on this earth, and he continues to bring freedom into the lives of people today. So what I want to invite you to do is maybe with those names you wrote down, maybe next to them or under it or wherever, wherever you have, wherever you have room, Maybe write one thing that you're going to do this week. One thing you could do to help that person who is spiritually imprisoned, physically imprisoned, emotionally imprisoned, financially imprisoned. What is, what is something you're going to do? See, Jesus would, would not just stand by. He, he went into the people's lives where it was messy and where it was ugly, and He brought them the truth and the good news. All of us are going to be tempted to avoid the mission. But we can't. We, this mission is too important. We can't be ashamed of this calling. You know, as you reach out to these people that maybe you've written down, don't be afraid to tell them that, that kind of like, uh, what, what did the Blues Brothers say? That you're on a mission from God, right? Of course, you're on a real mission from God. Okay, not their mission, okay? I want you to think today what that mission looks like in your life because see accepting god's mission finishes the work of his calling you know i can remember when i was um, nine years old and i accepted christ and and i was later baptized and and then i grew in my faith i studied i was in the process of becoming and if you look at these purposes that we've talked about in the series it was it was the process that took place in my life and just like in yours first i realized that he loved me that he died for me then, then i realized how important it was for me to 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 belong to the church to belong to other people in my faith then i realized that i have to become more and more like jesus I still have a long way to go there, but I've grown in that way through the years. And, and then I realized, hey, God didn't just put me on this earth to be about me. He, he wants me to bless others and to serve others. And then we come full circle. We come full circle because then now I am a part. I am a part of this good news, of sharing this purpose. Anyway, that's what God wants to do in you. He wants to complete and finish the work of His calling. You know what? In our church, 19 years ago, and then again seven years ago, we did this series, The Purpose Driven Life, that we've just gone through here over these last few weeks. And it was a powerful moment in our church the last two times. And, and I've heard from some of you through this series that it's been a powerful moment for you. But there is a danger that comes from this. The danger is to know and not do. I'm afraid that's often what the church can be guilty of. We can know, but we don't do. 
We can know the mission, but not carry it out. See, God is only going to accomplish, it, accomplish His mission if we are His hands and His feet. And so today, I want to invite you, I want to challenge you to be a part of His mission. So again today, again today, we need to accept, we need to accept God's calling. Let's bring it up here on the screen. <clears throat> there it is. Accept the mission and live out the call and then go with purpose. That's what I want to invite you to do today.